Hi, I'm Joni Martin. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator located in Southwest Wisconsin. Thanks for joining me for another Merry Monday segment on my YouTube channel. Today I'm showing you a Christmas card made with the Lights of Glow paper pack and I'll show you the same card in two versions, which is such a better use of our, your paper packs. Thanks for joining me. This is the pretty Christmas card we're making today. We're gonna to use some different die cuts and an embossing folder that you might not think of as a Christmas embossing folder. But first, let's talk about the paper pack. This is a paper pack that's in your July through December mini catalog and it's called Lights of Glow. You can find underneath my video a list of all the directions and supplies I use. So you can find item number and everything you need there. This is a six by six paper pack and it comes in a variety of colors. Here's one of them. I'm kind of thinking Halloween with this. I don't know. Here's another one. Notice we have gold kind of going through all this. Check out this one. Isn't that pretty? And we're going to use one of these today. I'm going to show you how to use this shape and what it's for. Here's another one. These are all, this is another one we're using. These are all versions of soft succulent. And this is evening evergreen and basic black. Now here's a neutral print you could use with lots of things. And now we're into cherry cobbler. And that's actually what I'm gonna make our card with today. I'll show you the back of them. It's a really versatile set. Wouldn't this make a great Halloween card? And then these on this side or on the reverse side, there's no gold, which sometimes makes it even more versatile. Lots of small prints, which are great for neutral backgrounds. Look at this. So those are our papers. Let's look at the card. Here's our card. And let's get making a card. My base is Cherry Cobbler. I'll put this right here so you can see what we're working on. And we're gonna take our card base and fold it in half. I like to line my card base up on the grid paper I just feel like if it starts straight, I'm more likely to get a straight fold. Okay, we'll set that aside. Next, we're gonna do the envelope. So if you're sending a card as pretty as this, do we wanna send it in a naked envelope? Absolutely not. We want someone to see that envelope and think, there's something amazing inside. I wanna open that one first. So one easy way to do that, to dress up your envelope, is just grab a scrap of the matching paper. This is two and a quarter by six, but again, all the measurements are on my blog. Here's your envelope. We're gonna actually fold it backwards, and we're putting glue right here. Now, I usually say to you, use whatever adhesive you like best. But for this project, do you want an adhesive that goes all the way around the envelope flap? By gluing it on all four sides, it makes sure it's not gonna get caught in a postal machine. The other thing you want to be aware of, this, this paper has a direction, and this is the top of your paper, so that's going to go to the top of your envelope flap. And then this kind of forms a wall. See how I'm holding it up? That helps me get this to the back. Now, green glue is wonderful in that you can move it around, but it moves around people. So you got to kind of just give it a second to catch, and we'll set that aside. Here are other pieces. Let's do some stamping next. I'm gonna stamp the front and the inside at the same time, because we like to be efficient with our stamping. And of course, I'm gonna use the Stamparatus. Those of you who have seen my videos before or watched my Facebook Lives know I always use the Stamparatus. I have some um, arthritis in my hands, and so hand strength is an issue, which this helps it. Um, sometimes I can drop ink pads or other things, and so by using a Stamparatus, I'm just a little much more assured of success. So I draw on here where I'm gonna put my card pieces. My card insert's going here. My circle is gonna go here. Now, as you can tell, these magnets are really strong. And we just talked about how I don't have great hand strength. So by wrapping them in duct tape, first of all, when they fly together, they aren't gonna you know, crash or break apart, shatter. And by having handles on them, it's easier to pull them apart. And you kind of want to slide them and not pull. This one's going here, and this one's going to hold the other one in place. I'm going to line it up in my circle, like so. And then we're going to ink. Did you notice I stuck a stamp case under here? That just keeps my plate flat, and I get better inkage. I happen to have my stamp cleaner in there, but you could use the stamp case 
from these stamps also. Now, when you're inking up, a light touch. I think sometimes beginner stampers think if they push really hard, they'll get more ink on their stamp and get a better image. And really what happens when you push hard is you're pushing ink away from your stamp, your ink pad in your stamp, and so you get less of an image. Okay, now we're gonna close it. This is where you wanna use the muscle. Give it a good push. On the inside of my card, it's gonna say Merry Christmas. On the outside, it says, hoping your Christmas shines bright with the love of family and friends. Isn't that a great sentiment? There we go, in one stamp. Now, if I hadn't gotten the image I wanted because nothing would move, I could re-ink it, but we don't have to. It worked the first time. Isn't that great when that happens? Okay. Next, we're gonna talk about embossing. And I'm not doing heat embossing. That's when you use a heat gun and have your powder turn kind of metallic. I'm going to emboss with an embossing folder and our cut and emboss machine. And an embossing folder will add texture to your card. Let's put these aside and I'll show you what we're going to emboss. This is one of the papers we're using and I'm going to add it to my card front before I emboss. Notice how it's a little longer than my card front? That allows me to use grid paper to line it up. For me, that's just easier. We're going to, I'm going to use our tape runner, but again, for this one, it wouldn't matter. Use whatever adhesive works for you. I'm going to line it up, and I'm going a quarter inch from the end. Each square on our grid paper is one quarter inch. There we go. Then we're gonna trim it. My snips are hiding under my paper. Does your scrapping space, your workspace become a mess when you're working? Mine always does. And I'm just gonna trim. And those little pieces can be recycled. There we go. Okay, so when we emboss, we're gonna use our cut and emboss machine. I'm gonna move a couple things on my workspace here. And I'm gonna move the paper, actually. Your cut and emboss machine will do better if it's on the surface and not on a sheet of paper. Because it wants to, it'll just be easier if it can grip something. So this is the stamping up version, the one I use. You may have all kinds of die cutting machines and most of them will also emboss. They just require a different plate sandwich. Stamping up makes it easy because it tells us the sandwich or the order of plates we need to do what we're gonna do. And we are using a standard embossing folder. That means it's relatively thin. We have very thick folders. They're called 3D, but we're doing this. Using a standard embossing folder, I need plate one. That's what I have here. And two of plate three. So plate three are the clear plates. And notice mine are well loved and well used. They're still great for embossing. We don't have, they'll work great for that. Okay, let's talk a second about our embossing folder. We want to put our folder in fold first, and we're going to use this line to guide and make sure stamping up is on the top. So when I do this, I'm going to line up here, and notice when I close it, I'm catching a little bit of air, and by putting it fold first, it's pushing that air out. If I went this way, I'd kind of be fighting that air that's in there. So I'm laying it down. I'm gonna kind of move a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm laying it on the plate and I'm putting my clear one on top. And then I'm just gonna roll it through. This rolls really smooth. If it isn't rolling smooth for you, that means your plate sandwich isn't correct. Now guys, I am right next to my camera stand. So I'm gonna move out of camera and finish rolling it. And I'll show you what we have. I'm going to close up the sides of my machine again. It doesn't take up much room on my crafting space. Bring back my table, table, my paper on my table. And let's look what we have. We've now gone from flat, so this is what it looked like when we started, to this. It just adds texture. It adds texture to my paper, the pretty print paper, and this. So what we have left is, we've cut a circle, and again, all those will be on there. And then do you recognize this piece? Remember I said I'd show you what we do with those papers? So this comes from here. 
And when I cut this, this is six by six, so I cut it three inches here, three inches here. And then I had each of these separately I can use. I used one of our layering circles for this one. You just lay down the circle that fits the closest around. And here's our stamped image. The stamped image, I'm gonna attach flat. Meaning I'm just gonna throw a little adhesive on the back. And then I'm gonna center it in here. Like so. But to attach it to the gold circle, I'm gonna use dimensionals. And if you haven't used dimensionals before, they're kind of like pieces of foam that are sticky on each side and they just raise up the element you're adding to your card a little bit, hence adding dimension. They don't give it so much height that it's gonna cost more than male. They're flat. So they go on sticky and then you pull the back off. You can use your fingernails. For me, it's easier to use the take your pick tool. Just like that. And then I'm gonna center that on here. Then this I'm going to again attach flat. This would be a card if you had all your circles cut, it would go together pretty fast. Decide where on here you want it. Oh, I think mine's going right there. Okay, let's attach that to our card front. For this I'm going back to my tape runner, but again, it's whatever works for you. And when your tape runner runs out, well, I'll grab a second one. Let's see if I have some left in this one. I use these a lot. There we go. All right. Second tape runner to the rescue. Okay. Then again, I'm starting with a, my card base straight. And for me, it's easier if it's open, it lays flatter. We're going to set that right here. Now, let's talk a second about the inside. We stamped our Merry Christmas, which is a beautiful font, but we have this little scrap of paper and we don't have a lot of writing in there. I mean, you have enough left, you could write a note at the bottom, but I'm going to, I cut this just slightly longer than my card. This is four inches. I cut this four and a quarter, maybe four and a half, so that I can, again, help line it up on the grid paper. And I'm just gonna put a piece of this along the top. And just a touch of green glue is all you need or your tape runner, whatever you're comfortable using. That's gonna go right here. Because I use green glue, I can kind of move it around till I get it where I want. And then I just kind of do this to make sure it's flat. Let's trim it. Like so. There we go. And now we can put that inside our card. The good thing about, I'm using Seal Plus. It's a really strong one, so you don't need a lot. That's gonna go right there. Now, doesn't that paper all of a sudden pop from there? When you see the inside of that, we're almost done. I was talking about shining brightly and it's a Christmas card, so I think it needs a touch of bling. So these, this lovely bling is in our catalog. And again, everything will be listed on the blog post beneath the video. I'm going to just add three. I like to add my embellishments in odd numbers and I typically put them in a triangular shape. It's just a little more pleasing to the eye. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle. There we go. Like so. Oh, we're almost done. We don't, don't want to forget our envelope. So remember we attach this. Now we're just going to use the envelope flap as our guide and we're going to trim. And as you can tell, it doesn't take long but it really just finishes your card project. There we go. So this is the version in Cherry Cobbler, which is really striking, but this is also a beautiful card. This is Soft Succulent. Same card, 
just in a different color palette, and both of these papers are available in the Lights a Glow Paper Pack. Thanks a lot for watching my YouTube video. I really appreciate it. If you've liked what you've seen, could I ask you to subscribe, hit the like button, or share with someone else who's a paper crafter who you think mightn't like my videos. Until next time, take care, stay well, and keep creating. It's good for you.